Well, I have to figure out the day before I get down to the honey house. What are we going to do today? Last night we had a frost warning. First day of summer today and we have a frost warning last night. As it just layers on. It was so windy yesterday that the bees weren't able to get out of the hive to actually go collecting nectar. So as we were working through we found calm yards still shook things down but they immediately turned to the boxes on the truck to rob. So without that inflow of nectar, the hives kind of stepped backwards with the amount of stores they have within their hive. So hopefully today isn't windy, which is off to a good start. The bees will be able to get out into the fields and collect some of this nectar. Wide open spaces. Just a fantastic day to work bees. Must be 17 degrees. It's not quite 20 degrees, I don't think. So it's really easy to work these hives. They're not too hot. Trying to work hives when it's too hot, they get all boily and you know agitated and such. These hives are bringing pollen in like crazy. The streams of it. But there isn't much of a nectar flow today. I guess the flowers haven't sparked up yet. So as we're working through shaking these bees down, we're not dealing with a whole lot of nectar. So we're not shaking a lot of nectar from the combs, which is kind of nice, actually. What we're doing today is shaking the bees down to the bottom to be able to get the queen down in that bottom box. Um, throughout the entire spring, we've been managing in the, the bottom brood chamber as a single. We've been promoting everything they need to be able to grow this massive nest, which then grew into the second. We took away as a split and we turned a box, a honey box up on top, but allowed her to continue movement between the two boxes. So she's able to continue to grow from that bottom box back up into the top box throughout that swarming season, allowed her to stretch her wings and just helped us manage these hives from swarming through this swarming season. Now that the honey flow is upon us, we want that queen back down into that bottom box. That's where she's going to stay for the rest of the summer. So we got to remove that queen from the top, put her down to the bottom. We don't have time to look for her. So what we do is we go through and simply put, we shake all the bees down to the bottom box, which means the queen has to be down there. Uh, we'll put a queen excluder in and keep the queen down in the bottom box. And then over the next, you know, 21 days or so, the brood in the top box will emerge. The bees will backfill that nest. And then we can remove this top, you know, the second away and harvest all the honey from it. <clears throat> A few reasons why we do that. Uh, one of the reasons is because we want to capitalize on all the honey flow that comes in. Honey is money. So we want to, you know, bring in as much honey as we can to be able to sell. That's our livelihood. The other thing is we don't want canola honey down in the bottom box. Canola is a real, it sets up hard and it makes for a really poor winter feed. So by putting the excluder in, holding that queen down in the bottom box, she will dominate this bottom nest. Instead of her nest being like this, she'll stretch her nest out sideways like that. And in a sense, she's gonna push all that honey up in the top box, leaving very little down to the bottom. So all that canola honey coming in will be pushed up. Very effective way to manage that canola honey coming in. And, that, and then, you know, instead of cursing it all winter as the bees struggle to winter on it, we sell it for a premium product and make, <clears throat> make a lot of money on it. So basically just go through the steps and what we are doing. hives are looking pretty healthy. We 
we've gone through and we've already equalized everything out. But anything that shows maybe a little bit too strong will maybe skim some brood from the top. Frame by frame, we'll go through, take a look. Shake them down. She's up here. Found her. Where is she? Nice. This is the breeder from last year. Gorgeous. And still cooking. She is maintaining a fantastic nest. Who is she? She is the Joker. One, two, three, four tags on her. She's a well, this high has been going for since 15. And looks like she's not stopping. So holy. She's still there. Yeah, there she is. She's up here. Cherish these moments. That is what my stock is based off of. Pure brilliance. Look at that. Had she not had her tag up front, like the Joker tag, I would have thought she was going to be in this year's too. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, exactly. We don't pick the same breeder twice in a row. That's bad news, but almost you can't help yourself. Nice looking queen. At any rate, that's the whole process. We uh, search for the queen as we go. And if we don't find her, then all the bees are in the bottom and just carry on. There she is. She's a little stubby one. Almost looks like she's a replacement queen. Is there eggs? Because, yeah, that's. Yeah, there's lots of eggs in there. Can you put her down? I don't like to shake new queens because they're more apt to fly off. They almost look like a replacement queen. Now if we found her, we don't have to shake anymore. Second and then a third. And this is going to hold them for a week, week and a half until we get back to them. And that is it. So for the rest of the season, the queen stays down in the bottom box. And for the rest of the season, we only manage up in that top box. And anything above the excluder is ours. Anything below the excluders is theirs. So that's pretty much a season wrapped up. The brood working season comes to an end. And now we focus exclusively on the honey season.